Welcome back to Profiles in Caring as we continue our story now on ELI, Empowering Lives International. According to UNICEF, the most recent estimate of the number of people in Kenya living with HIV is 1.5 million. The numbers are staggering, but even more so when you consider that there's a name and a face and a story with every one of those numbers. For example, Betty Tekka. Thousands of Kenyan villagers convene for this day of celebration. It's a carnival-like atmosphere, complete with races and soccer, and an inspirational message about survival. It is good to have this, to have us tested, so that we can be treated as early as possible. This is 38-year-old Betty Tekka, single mother of two. Her life has always been a struggle. I was working as a bearmaid, and I had so many sexual partners. You guys go to the bar and they leave with a barmaid, is that normal? Yeah, I can pay house rent and I can feed my children. Give me a number of how many men you have slept with. Oh, uncountable. There are so many. 20? Over. 60? I can think so. 100? Yeah. For more than 11 years, Betty's health was rapidly declining. She was first misdiagnosed with the flu, then a couple of years later told that she just had allergies, then even later, maybe it was malaria, but none of the treatments worked. When the pains was, were unbearable, I woke up and asked God, there are two things you will do for me. Either restore my health, if you know that I have some work to do for you, then I'll do for you. And if you know that I've done everything, take away my life so that I can rest. And then Betty met a member of ELI's health ministry team who offered to take her to a better clinic. So she counseled me anyway and tested me and the results were positive. It, it was not easy to accept. It's not easy because it's painful after knowing that you're HIV positive and the end results of people living with AIDS is death. That's what we knew. Fear itself is what allowed HIV to grow to what it is. Julie McGowan's been living here in Kibcaran for the last four years. She's a volunteer nurse practitioner with ELI. Sitting on her lap is three-year-old Flovia. She's an orphan and she too is HIV positive. She had stopped walking, she'd ta stopped talking, she'd stopped playing, and she was in the process of starving. And in just nine weeks here at the ELI Kipcarin Medical Clinic, Flovi has grown from 13 pounds to 22 pounds and just recently was adopted by a family in Kipcarin. At this clinic, every health issue has been addressed, from treatment of common ailments like malaria and tuberculosis, to eye care and dentistry, to clean water solutions. Most people in this community, they carry water from a river or maybe from a well someplace, but it's not, it's probably contaminated. And so we've taught them to put it inside this water guard inside and it really helps to decrease the amount of diarrheal diseases that we see. This clinic also provides free testing for HIV, a service which prior to ELI had not been available in Kip Karen. Which brings us back to Betty. Though she may be an outcast, she believed that God had kept her alive with HIV for a reason. And that's when ELI Community Director David Tarus heard her story. Tarus told me to go for lunch in his house. So we were with Julia and Alison. So we entered his house. So I was wondering, how are they going to serve this meal? Because there were houses where you go when they know you are HIV positive, they give you everything you've used. Because they think you would have affected the cup yeah, you drank or the yeah, silverware you use. Yeah. yeah. So I feared and thought maybe because they have given me a meal in this house, in the end they might give me the plates, mm -hmm. even the cup. What a shame it will be. But then after taking the meal, they took everything together. I was amazed. Inspired by David's and ELI's acceptance of her, Betty now works with ELI's HIV Community Mobilization Program. Because I know through me, this one or two people are going to be changed. I know, it's a must. That village will not remain the same. It took such boldness for her to come out and say, I am HIV positive and there is hope. You know, she's on antiretroviral and she has been a spokesperson 
for saving you know, countless number of lives for people who are affected positively with that. And it just came out of pure obedience and guts, honestly guts. Do you feel empowered because of empowering this? Uh, very much, very much. I'm totally empowered. What an amazing blessing! What an amazing blessing! We're seeing changes all over the place in people's lives and so I love that I get to do this and there are definitely challenges and things that there are moments where I wish I wish the world wasn't like this but because it is I'm not gonna run away from it. See we are now physically fit, mentally fit, academically fit, socially fit, spiritually fit and emotionally fit through your support in USA. What an amazing blessing. What an amazing blessing. I saw young children here. I can see them. They are smiling. This is what we don't even need to talk about. It is seen. It is seen in the lives. You can see the joy. It is already there. You have already impacted this place. There is a bomb blast. And what we are seeing is just an explosion. So there is no way we can cover it again, even if you don't come. <laughs> you have already brought it here, and we have already seized it. We have already taken it. Whoever receives a child in my name receives me. Thank you. What is the Swahili word for empower? Empower. Kutia nguvu. Nimetiwa nguvu na E-L-I. Nimetiwa nguvu. Maisha yangu ya metiwa nguvu. My life has been empowered by E-L-I as a whole. What an amazing blessing! What an amazing blessing! If you'd like to see more of Betty, log on to our website, goodtube.org, where you can also learn more about Empowering Lives International. For all of us at Profiles in Caring, I'm Kimberly Perkins. Thanks for watching, and thanks for caring. Amazing.